Okay, so today we're gonna talk about the music video gear that I use when it comes to shooting music videos. I'm not just gonna talk about the gear itself, but how they play a role and how I shoot and how I'm able to work things around. Even when the budget's not there, how does it benefit me to make a better outcome? So it's gonna be a good one. Let's go ahead and uh, jump straight to it. See I live, work my biz. I'm too far from the rest now what you used to. Okay, the same what you used to. Always with the new So as you guys are watching, these two things here are really what I show up with when it comes to shooting a music video. I really come fully rigged out with this gimbal, with the camera mounted on there, with the lens, everything kind of ready to go. And then I have my bag here, which I have my whole cage set up. Once you guys see what's in here, you guys get the point on, you know, getting a bag and why I got it. Why did it have to be this type of size? I have many Pelican cases, but it did not work for what I wanted. And the biggest word you're gonna hear for today's YouTube video is gonna be efficiency. I'm very big when it comes to efficiency, time, how to manage time. I'm very big on that. So anyways, let's get started. I'm gonna put this down and we'll start talking with the gimbal setup and then we'll talk about what's in here. Let's explain the camera that I have mounted right now. And majority of the times I kind of have this set up besides the lens that I'll swap out from time to time. This is the way I normally show up. So I have the Sony A7S III with the Sigma 35mm 1.4 art lens. Um, if you guys know me really well, you know I'm a Sigma fan. For number one reason is they're sharp, but number two, honestly, for the price, you cannot beat it. I'm not about to go spend an extra $600 for a Sony G Master when the Sigma art lenses do the job. And then autofocus, you don't lose anything. They honestly work the same and I've tried, I tested them all. So again, all right, just have to save more money. So Sony 7S III, we got the Sigma 35mm 1.4. And now the gimbal that I have on this is the DJI RS3 Pro. What I love about this gimbal is the locking mechanism. So when you turn it on, it opens up. When you turn it off, it closes back in. And the setup that I bought for this gimbal, because I just like the form factor for my shoots, is this tilt -a ring um, And I bought the V-mount battery with it. I also bought the power adapter up here. And the V-mount battery, the reason why I ended up doing it is because I wanted to go ahead and mount a mini V-mount in order to power this monitor I have here because my monitors, I hate when they die on set. Again, everything's efficiency, right? So I want, majority of my shoot i don't i don't want to swap batteries i just want to focus on the shots i don't want things to take me away from what i'm really focused on just having to change batteries just takes me away so i want to make sure it's just really shoot 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 and be ready at all times so i did buy this micro v mount which is uh the moment v mount it was very cheap it was like 130 dollars for this v mount anything i talk about it'll be linked in the description below um but it lasts all day for a shoot and the monitor that I use is the Automo Shinobi 7 inch. And honestly, this monitor is amazing. I'm a big fan when it comes to these 7 inch monitors because when you're filming artists, you're able to display them, especially when you have your love built inside, you're able to show them what the image is looking like. So from right there and then, they're able to see if they want to retake the shot or you just get them excited because you're providing an experience. So I'm very big on just having like something for the client. It's not all about us. So I know I could have got five inch, which I have as well, but the seven inch is just something that you can show the client. And as I was talking when it came to the Vima, you know, I don't like swapping batteries. So same thing for the Sony A7S III, I have a battery grip and it has two batteries. And this normally tends to last about five hours for both batteries to die. Typically I'm turning it off throughout the shoot. So most of the time it will last me about eight hours on a music video. At most, I'll probably swap it one time, which is not a deal breaker. This is the gimbal setup. Um, again, I'm all about efficiency, right? So how I'm able to maintain my music videos to keep them up to the level, despite the budget, maybe one budget is $1,000 less than the other one. How I'm really able to maximize my shoots is I show up on set ready to go. So I just strap this down on my car. I tie it up so it doesn't fall when I'm driving because I'm a little reckless at times. I don't have to get to the location, set up, you know, do an extra five minutes. And you guys know a lot of the times when the budget's not there, chances are it's just you the artist and just very few people so the artist can come to you he could be talking to you and that takes away time from having to set up your gimbal and then you know sometimes you feel that stress where everyone's just waiting for you to set up and get things going especially with low budgets so i just wanted something that doesn't take me away from the artist i'm still able to deliver an experience uh, deliver great shots 
not worry too much on my gear, worry more about lighting and those more important things that go into grabbing a visual and executing that video. So that's why I show up just like this. Um, so yeah, this is the gimbal setup, but now let's jump into what's in my camera bag, which is not a Pelican case. So let's go ahead and talk about it. What's in this camera bag? I told you guys in the beginning, everything I'm gonna talk about is when it comes to efficiency. I'm big on that, right? I'm that one DP or director that hates setting up gear, even for my podcast. I just wanted to kind of be ready to go when I get there. So this is my next setup right here. And everything is set up. The only thing that I gotta plug in, honestly, is this D tab to the monitor so it could just turn on. But tell me this wasn't fast. So right off the bat, I have my handheld slash tripod camera and I have my gimbal setup that you guys already saw. And I'm all about efficiency. Again, look, just right off the bat, I could just shoot videos right away. Obviously, I still have to set up my lights, but when it comes to my camera gear, I am not over setting up. I'm not taking a while. If the artist wants to talk to me, I don't mind it because everything is good to go. I already have my base plate at the very bottom of this rig so I can just slide it in the tripod or take it out and go handheld. Again, I'm all about efficiency. So let's talk about what I have here. And it is a second Sony A7S III. Same thing, I have a battery grip. As I mentioned, I hate changing batteries. I'm all about saving the most, focusing more on what's really important on set. I have the Automos Shinobi, the five inch. I normally had the Ninja 5 and I still have it. From time to time, I will use that when it comes to installing the wireless receiver transmitter but if i know i'm just directing dp it's a small budget the shinobi works it lasts all day the ninja 5 freaking kills batteries so if i know i'm not gonna go ahead and have a director's monitor on site i'm just gonna run with the shinobis because they're a lot better when it comes to batteries not the seven inch but the five inch will last all day and the v-mount will still have plenty of juice left the ninja will kill the v-mount if i have the small rig monitor mount same moment or mo man I don't know how to exactly say it, but same V-mount. Again, it's very uh, cheap. I have the Condor Blue D-Tap dummy battery, so I can go ahead and right away plug this into the Shinobi. And just like that, it'll last all day. I also have my custom LED on this five inch. Again, I'm very big on me showing the client, but I'm also the, that one person I noticed, a lot of people that I'm with, a lot of directors that I'm with, uh, DPs, everyone uses false color and these other things in order to expose a shot. I have my LUT built inside that I know exactly how I want to expose. So I just go based on image. I don't go on false color. I just literally go on image. I know the highlights, how much I can blow them, how much I can underexpose a shot. That's just the way that I work. Uh, I just got my eyes addicted to, to the LUT that I have. I've been using it for the last seven years since the S1H. I just tweaked it a little bit to go into the Sony route. And then I also have a cage on this, which is small rig. And what's cool, I, I did not know that they made one, which is kind of universal in case you have the battery grip. They made a whole cage that wraps all around. So I had to get it just in case I wanted to put a, a hand on the side. But realistically, I, I don't think there's a need for that. Again, I'm just, I want it as simple as possible. We have the 15 millimeter rods and just the base really to install for the base plate on the bottom and the beam out. But other than that, that is pretty much my handheld slash tripod setup. And the lens that I have on here is a Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4, which is my favorite lens I've ever owned. 50 millimeter 1.4 creates such beautiful images. I'm a big fan, big fan. Um, and again, here and there, if I wanna go gimbal and I want a tighter shot, but it just needs to have a certain look, 50 millimeter, I will attach it to the gimbal. So those are two lenses. Here and there, I will have that 24 mil that I'm filming on right now in my camera bag, but I learned to just kind of let go because the 35 just provides a way better image than a 24 1.4. That's just um, based off me using a 24 millimeter for the last three years and then finally buying the 35 about eight months ago. The 35 just has a way better image, but that's just to my, my liking. It's all optional. So uh, I guess I'll stand up. I'm gonna kind of crouch a little bit just because yeah, I'm gonna get out of frame, but there's that. And let me show you guys, actually, let me let me put this down. Hopefully you guys can see it, but really only one divider. So the camera was here and right over here, I have a divider that's in the bottom, which is this right here. And underneath it, we got the G Master 14 millimeter from Sony. That is, you never know when you're in a tight spot and you wanna make the place seem bigger. 
the 14 millimeter 1.8 will come in clutch. This lens was really expensive, but I can't tell you how many times it saved me. Or you're just able to get really artistic shots, depending on what you're going for. And the last lens is the Sigma 105 millimeter macro lens. And this one is whenever I want to get super tight and just want to have that super aesthetic image. This one's going to do the job. Um, I do have the 70 to 200, but I honestly, when it comes to my music videos, I like to shoot everything prime because it just looks better. It, I just can't you explain it. If you guys know, you guys know primes are the way to go when it comes to music videos. Or at least to me, that's my preference. That's what I prefer. So let me just go ahead and put these away. This is kind of very uncomfortable. So let me sit back down and then to kind of finish this off, I have this up here, which again, very minimal, right? I'm not really focused too much when it comes to overdoing it. I used to have Pelican case. They used to have all these things, but you know, when you're on set, you're looking around, even if it's organized, sometimes you end up unorganizing it because you're grabbing things. You're trying to make it fast for your shoot. So I'm all about efficiency. Only two other lenses. If I send out one of my homies, hey, go give me the other lens. It's going to literally, there's only two lenses on the side. So that's all he's going to grab. And that's only if I know I'm going to take those two. I don't, I don't take all my lenses. It just depends what I'm shooting and I'm going to go based on that. So I might just only have one lens in there and that's pretty much it. So next thing that was in here on the zipper is variable NDs. They're not variable NDs. They're just uh, pro mist. I have just, just like six stop, three stop. I don't like variable NDs because I just, I feel like they always have a color cast to them. So what I learned over all my years of filmmaking is buying these Hoya ND filters and these Hoya ones, uh, I guess it just says Hoya HMC, uh, ND X8, but these, you can stack them on top of each other and you're not going to get any color casting. You can stack three, four, you're not going to get any color casting. That's how great these are and they were cheap i think they were like 40 bucks a piece or could be a little bit more maybe 60 but for what you're getting the fact that you get no color casting that's why i stuck with these these variable indies were they're easier to use on set because you can just twist them and just kind of get a little darker i don't like that crisscross i don't like that sky turning like a little off blue to the other blue i've had a lot of encounters with that so that worked and then a black pro mist the standard the 1.8 can never go wrong with that as you guys know you need to have a lot of HDMI. I'm a big fan of having a lot of them because you just never know when one HDMI stops working. This is probably the first time that you guys probably seen something so simple like that, where it's just really, I just took this out and it was so easy. Uh, my biggest thing is if you guys want to create better videos sometimes, and I know a lot of times we tend to want, you know, the budget has to be bigger. But sometimes it's up to us as creators to kind of build our setups to make it work better for us. When, we, when we're not getting those right budgets, we're still able to execute. Sometimes it's kind of maneuvering things. There's a reason why all my videos kind of look the same, but it's despite the budget. And that's because I try to work the best that I can within that budget that they're giving me. So that is my music video gear. Uh, this bag is the Amram P60X. I bought the three kit and once I realized that this fits like that, I took all the lights out. I put in another bag and then, yeah, this camera just goes in there, made it easy, gimbal on its own. But realistically, that's it. You can carry both and show up, start shooting, waste no time. If they, someone books it for two hours, you're up and coming. And those are the type of shoots you're getting, you know, invest in yourself. I always say you can't expect someone to just pay you a lot of money, right? You got to work your way up. So some, the biggest advice that I can tell you guys, besides showing up and doing these type of moves is buying two cameras. Number one, you should have two cameras because you never know if one, one camera goes wrong on set, you have a backup. So right off the bat, at least you have a backup. You just never know something. Maybe can go wrong with the sensor. Something can go wrong with this or that. You have a backup. You don't have to worry about it or try to fix it on set. You just swap it and you figure it out later on. So. That's the number one thing. But on top of that, you could do what I'm doing as well. Have a handheld rig set up ready to go and a gimbal set up ready to go. Save your time, shoot more, execute, promote, and be able to showcase everyone that you are able to make those type of videos. And they're not even gonna know the type of budget, but you're really investing in yourself. So these are the two camera setups. Again, very simple yet effective. Hope this video helped you guys. If it did, drop it a like, subscribe, because that always helps the channel. But more importantly, I appreciate you guys if you stuck this long. Anyways, catch you guys next time. Peace out.